This is an O scale auto rack. This is my O scale layout. And this is one of my greatest design mistakes. Scale auto rack, meet overpass. Oops. Welcome back folks. Hope you're having a great week. They say a model railroad is never finished. And that, <sighs> that is a true statement. There's always something to work on or tweak or change or redo in my case. You see, I have a particular problem that I need to solve, and I'm gonna need your help so that we can figure this out together. It's gonna to be like a little project for all of us, and I reap all the benefits because I get to put it on the layout. Are you up for the challenge? Model Railroaders, assemble! <laughs> Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Now, before we start, I got to clear the air of any rumors that may circulate because of this video. So, one, no, I am not changing scales. Although I do keep my N-gauge train set right here on the ledge next to Hannah Montana, who watches over the layout all the time. Hmm. And number two, no, I am not ripping up all of my track and changing it to something like Gargraves or Atlas. At least not yet. We have two projects ahead of us. One is going to be fairly annoying, but relatively simple. And that is that we have to raise my elevated lines. You see, when I designed this layout, I rushed because I just wanted the trains to run. I couldn't believe that I finally had a layout in my own basement. But I made a grave mistake in preventing any of the larger rolling stock from going around my layout. Even my poor hobo car from my Polar Express cannot go under the bridges. Take it to Rome. That was probably the most disappointing thing was when I got this car. In fact, if you watch my Polar Express video, I carefully edit any time this hobo is about to go under the bridge. You actually never see it pass. Movie magic. My goal is also to expand and enhance the camera angles that I'm able to bring you in these videos because a lot of these are just not working, like this one. See, this is always an area I've wanted to capture, but I'm, I'm just not feeling the space. I'm not feeling the space. I got storage here. The line's just sort of hanging out here above the other one. So, you know, I don't know. Whew. Or this one. This is another angle I've always wanted to capture. But again, same thing, very difficult because of the backdrop. So putting something like a mountain element here, expanding these backdrops, is gonna give us a lot more usable camera space. And this one. This area right here has always been another challenging area. The track overhangs on the main line because I can't push it back any further against the wall. So this is where some real ingenuity might need to come into play or maybe we're gonna connect this circuit all the way to the other end of the layout. Who knows? Anything is possible. This area here is one I wanna maintain. This scene is probably one of my favorites on the layout. So let me know what you think and what ideas you have to improve this elevated line. Leave me a comment below and let me know your thoughts on how to make my layout even better. I figured this video would be much more entertaining if we include some trains in it. I don't just want to run around and look at track. So let's go through our picks tonight for the engines that are going to help illustrate some of these challenges I'm having as we design and think about this upper line. Joining us on this elevated line tonight is our MTH Rail King, Commodore Vanderbilt, and this is painted in the Breast Cancer Awareness Paint Scheme. So just a great cause, and I have it pulling the replicas of the infamous post-war girl set. So this is a really neat pastel looking train that's gonna be running around the top. And for the scale fans here, we have an MTH Premier, Kansas City Southern. 
that's going to be pulling some scale freight cars. In fact, we even have a Lionel Freight Sounds scale box car right here. This thing makes all kinds of racket. On our main track tonight, we have two fantastic steam engines. The first one is the engine that we refer to as the hot dog in this house, which is, of course, this beautiful Lionel Vision Line 49er Challenger. Now, this color scheme, this paint scheme was not real, did not exist in real life. Yes, I am aware that this is not a real paint scheme. Check this one out. It's a beautiful Lionel sound. Now, of course, this engine features Lionel's additional speaker system. So you have speakers in the engine and speakers in the tender. So you get that sound that flows through the engine. It's beautiful. Lots of smoke effects on this one. You can see it billowing out. <laughs> and of course, our tender even makes noise. You got the blue car? You got yeah, the blue car? It's here in the cab. So you'll hear the crew sounds, getting the engine ready, and that is played again by the auxiliary tender. So you have sounds in the tender and sounds in the engine. You may recognize the engine next to me from a video I did a couple of weeks ago. And I said we were gonna run this again, and here it is. This is actually from several years ago. And this is a JLC, which is a Joshua Lionel Cowan edition steam engine. This is a scale steam engine of the Norfolk and Western Y6B. And the JLC edition engines came out before the Vision line. So they were considered to be the highest end engines that Lionel produced at the time. This is of course the early 2000s. This engine, Features some incredible sounds, still has speed control, but it is not legacy. So it is considered train master command control. That is the technology it has. Still an iconic engine in every way. So we're gonna fire this one up. You'll hear that famous, famous whistle. Just an incredible whistle. And of course, because this was a JLC edition engine, it does feature road-specific crew dialogue, right here. Northern Western 2200, you may proceed. You gotta love that. Big steam, all day long. Behind me on the inner main line is a massive lash-up of diesel power. This is a Union Pacific fleet with two heritage units on the front. See the Katy? Of course we have the Katy in here. Anytime I run UP Heritage, you're gonna see that engine. We also have, at the front of this train, taking point, a new, to us, MTH Premier, Southern Pacific, Union Pacific. Southern Pacific, Union Pacific, Union Pacific, Pacific. So much Pacific. <laughs> Southern Pacific Heritage Unit. So now we have two of the six, and we might have one more on the way, but you'll have to wait and find out in an upcoming video. I always enjoy lashing these up because you just hear the massive sounds of the power. Let's do the startup sequence together, shall we? Prepare yourselves. I have goosebumps. Can you see him? Uh, can, you, can you see him? Oh, 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 oh yeah! All right, let's get these running. So much power. The second part of this is the fun part, and this is where I need your feedback. This is the south end of my layout. You've seen this many times, and we're gonna focus mainly on this area tonight. What I wanna do is get suggestions, because I'm considering maybe changing the track around a little bit, maybe getting some of the clutter out of the south end, and also, I want to conceal this area where the trains turn around. I'm thinking maybe a mountain scene, something that might consume quite a bit of space behind the Bailey Township, which is of course this Main Street scene, but it would provide a nice way and a nice scene so that the trains can disappear and return going the opposite direction. Now there are some things that I wanna to try to keep incorporated into these scenes. For example, this double track bridge is one of my favorite parts of the layout. You can see these scenes right here with these trains that are going under the bridge and over it at the same time. 
I can literally get four trains on video in the same clip, and you'll see right here just how that works. Maximum train action, which is what we love here. We love running trains. I can't thank you all enough for offering your suggestions and for all of the support that you've been giving to this channel over the past year and a half. As always, a huge thank you to all of my subscribers and everyone who's been supporting this channel. My name is Chris, and this is RBP Trains. We'll see you next time.